One time I get to church, seven years old, there's a dead body in the front. It's a funeral. Nobody explains that to a seven-year-old Michael Jr. I'm thinking that's how they roll. <laughs> like every three weeks or so, they bring a dead body in as an example or something. And the dude on stage yell at everybody in the audience like they the ones that did it. I remember asking my grandmother, I'm looking for some explanation. I'm like, Grandma, what happened to the man in the box? What happened to the man in the box? Her whole explanation was, he in a better place. I'm like, what kind of box did he live in before? We're driving to the restaurant. We always have the same, you know, the same fight. What do you want to eat? I don't care. What do you want to eat? What do you want to eat? I don't care. What do you want to eat? What do you want to eat? I don't care. What do you want to eat? Will you just make a decision? Okay, we'll have Italian. I hate Italian. Just want a large cup of whiskey. That's all. <laughs> we get to the restaurant. We're looking at the menus. The waiter comes up, asks us what we want. What do you like? Hey, honey, what do you want? You know what I want? I want you to want to know what I want. <laughs> We're gonna need a couple more minutes. <laughs> it gets worse, the guy comes back for a drink order. I say, yeah, I'll take a cherry Coke. Honey, you want a cherry Coke? <laughs> you don't even know who I am, do you? <laughs> I don't like cherries and I don't like Coke and I for sure don't like cherry Coke. <laughs> what, does your girlfriend like cherry Coke? <laughs> no, she likes Pepsi. Erwin, what is he plural for ox? Oxen. The farmer used his oxen. Brian, what? Brian, what's the plural for box? Boxing. I bought two boxing of donuts. Oh, no, Brian, no. Let's try another one. Erwin, what is he plural for goose? Geese. I saw a flock of geese. Brian, what? Brian, what's the plural for moose? Moosen! I saw a flock of moosen! There are many of them, many much moosen! Out in the woods, in the wood is, in the woods in! The meat's wanting the food, food is to eating is it? The meat's wanting the food and in the wooding in is it? If you go to Starbucks, learn their drink. Like when you go to the drive-thru, learn what they like to drink at Starbucks. It'll blow her mind. It will, because women are, that's a hard drink. They're very complicated. <laughs> Men are easy at Starbucks. You know, you ever go to the drive-thru, can I help you? Yeah, give me a mint tea, coffee, no cream. Uh, honey, what do you want? <laughs> okay, here's what I want. <laughs> listen, listen, this is what I want. I want a tall, skinny, sugar-free, decaf, soy, vanilla latte, extra hot, whipped cream, double sleeve, no cup. Please tell me you got that, please. It was the day the science project was due. Waking up that morning, that was fun, huh? Yeah. Your head had pop off your pillow. Oh no. That's due today. I had nine months to work on it, I did nothing. I have a cardboard box. I don't know what to do for my project, so I brought in a paper cup filled with dirt, just hoping she'd know I'm an idiot and just walk right on past me. Just as long as I was holding something. Huh? What do you have there, Brian? Oh, it's a cup of dirt. Just put an F on there and let me go home. Well, explain it. Well, it's a cup with dirt in it. I call it cup of dirt. You should move on now. You should go ahead and move on. Head on down the line there. I remember my mom when I was a kid. She used to give me good advice too late. <laughs> Think about it. Good advice too late. Like when I was a kid, I hid my head on the corner of the table. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Boy, I'm sure glad you were there, Hoss. <laughs> Who knows what would have happened, Nostradamus? <laughs> Moms are a big help when you lose something, aren't they? Your mom is just not a help at all. Hey, mom, I can't find my wallet. Well, it's gotta be somewhere. 
It's like, that's good. I thought I was going crazy for a minute. I thought I was looking for something that didn't exist. Thank you. And then they go, where'd you leave it last? You're good. Thanks, Captain Obvious. I was on a totally different track. I was looking where I left it first. But you don't know. You just show up, you know. Oh, I got my glove. You any good? I don't know. My mom told me to come out here. We'll get out in right field. Okay. Turn around, you moron. Oh, okay. Not the whole way. Oh, only some. Some way. I never knew what was going on out in right field. All I knew is at the end of the game, I'd get a free snow cone. That's all I knew. Yeah. Get out there. Oh, free snow cone. Free snow cone. Brian, what's the score? Free snow cone. Free snow cone at the end of the game. If you play, they're going to give you a free snow cone. Even if you play half game, you get the whole... You don't get a half snow cone. You get a whole snow cone for half the game. The people that play whole game get a whole snow cone, and the people that play half game get a whole snow cone. So it's always whole, always whole snow cone. So I'd rather play half game. I'd rather play half game. Hot Pockets, yeah. They haven't been around that long, like 10 years. How'd they come up with that? Was there some kind of marketing meeting like, I got an idea. How about we fill a Pop-Tart with nasty meat? And you could cook it in a sleeve thing. You could dunk it in the toilet. There is the vegetarian Hot Pocket for those of us that don't want to eat meat but still would like diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea Pocket! There's the lean pocket. I don't even want to know what's in there. Imagine the directions. Take out of box, place directly in toilet. <laughs> Flush pocket. Recently they introduced the breakfast hot pocket. Finally. I can't think of a better way to start the day. <laughs> Good morning. You're about to call in sick. My dad's funny. I, I love my dad, but I locked my keys in my car at my dad's house not too long ago. And he's like, I'll help you out, brother. I'll be right back. So my dad runs in the house. He gets this wire coat hanger, comes out and undoes that coat hanger. I'm like, what you going to do, MacGyver? <laughs> and shut up. I'm opening that door. He takes that coat hanger. Five seconds. <laughs> he opens that car door. Takes a hanger. He goes, Timmy, here's what you do. Take that coat hanger. Put that in your trunk. I'm gonna let that line marinate just for a second. I don't know. I don't have a punchline for that. It just freaks me out, you know? These McDonald's fries are truly amazing. Right? Has your mother ever made anything as good as a McDonald's fry? <laughs> Not even close. We lie to ourselves when we eat McDonald's fries. We're like, oh, they're so thin, they couldn't be fattening. <laughs> you ever eat too many McDonald's fries? Of course not! of them there's always that moment when you're eating mcdonald's fries where you're like what happened where'd they go then you start scrounging for the fry crumbs you're like no that's just a piece of paper from the straw but it was touching the fries so sometimes there's a loose fry in the bag you know the bonus fry It's like Jesus is up in heaven. Give him an extra fry. It's weird. I mean, considering calling an ambulance for yourself, what are you supposed to say about yourself? Can you come get me? <laughs> yeah, I don't feel so good. Just come on and I'll be lying on the floor. So they check me into my luxurious half room. Nurse finally comes in. How are you doing tonight? I'm on a garment. I have a painkiller or something. This is killing me. So she goes, how would you describe your pain? It's killing me. I don't know if you remember that part. So she asks, how would you rate your pain? Four stars. Two enthusiastic thumbs up. But I have a newfound respect for doctors. I do. Because when you think about it, Unless we're sick, we listen to absolutely nothing doctors tell us. They're like, you should lose weight. Never gonna happen. <laughs> what else you got? 
you, you should exercise. Does eating French fries count? <laughs> Get out of my office. I remember one time I was in bed, and my dad came in, and he said, Good night, John. Did you brush your teeth? And I said, Yes. But here's the thing. I hadn't. But who cares? I didn't have, like, a job interview or anything. So my dad comes back in a couple minutes holding my toothbrush. He says, John, is this your toothbrush? And I said, yes. And he said, so we agree that this is your toothbrush. <laughs> then he said, John, this toothbrush is bone dry. Like, he looked down and he said, bone dry. He said, you lied to me. I said, Dad, I did not lie. I said that I brushed my teeth. I never specified that I brushed my teeth tonight. And if the court reporter reads back my remarks, you will see that I did not perjure myself. <laughs>